This experiment is the photoelectric effect, and it's all going to centre around this, which is an electroscope. This is not a gold leaf electroscope. Instead of that, it has a rod, which is pivoted in roughly in the middle, and this stem, it, it has this diagonal section in the middle so that part of the stem is on one side of the rod and part of the stem is on the other side of the rod at the opposite at the opposite end. What that will do then is uh, measure charge. So if this plate becomes charged, the charge will be transmitted along the stem because it's all one piece. And where the rod is pivoted, that will also pick up the charge. So everything will have the same charge. And as a result of that, this part of the stem will be repelling the rod here, forcing the rod and the stem apart and down the bottom the same thing will happen, causing there to be something like a couple set up on the rod, and that will rotate the rod away from the stem. The further away that the rod is deflected from the stem, which we can see roughly measured by the numbers at the bottom, will be a measure of how much charge is on the rod. So the further away it is, the more charge it's storing on the electroscope. At the top we have a zinc plate and that's where we will be charging the electroscope. So if I give you a quick demonstration of charging the electroscope, I have a piece of polythene and some fur here to charge. So you can see as I'm moving it close to the plate, it's deflecting the rod away. Okay, so now the electroscope is charged and you can see the deflection of the rod away from the stem down the bottom on that, that grade there. Okay, so the electroscope is charged. Now polythene, this plastic rod that I was using, that when I charge it, it picks up a negative charge. So the electroscope is negatively charged. Okay, so that's how an electroscope works. Now on to the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is the classic proof that light behaves like a particle. And, and not only light itself, but also electromagnetic radiation on the whole acts like a particle. It's the classic proof of that. So if you take that with Young's double slit experiment, which is the classic proof that light is a wave, what you see is that light, or electromagnetic radiation, can behave like both. It has a wave-particle duality. So let's go through the experiment and see how wave theory cannot explain this experiment, whereas particle theory can. Now, that has a negative charge, the electroscope, and as I'm sure you can appreciate, there's plenty of visible light, there's also plenty of infrared radiation, in the room falling on the plate and yet the charge has remained constant it's about the t it's on about the 2.5 mark and it's been on that since i charged it i'm now going to get a, a more intense source of light from this lamp and show it on the plate but i've got my intense source of light there We'll leave that for a little while, but I'm sure you will appreciate that the rod is not moving and it's not going to start moving either. Now, that light is transferring energy to the plate. Wave theory says that it's transferring energy continuously. So that process is happening. However, no charge is being removed from the plate. Okay, so turn that off. Now what I'm going to do is something different. I'm going to use an ultraviolet lamp instead of a visible light lamp. Well, actually, there is a little bit of visible light coming out of the lamp, but in addition to that, there's ultraviolet. Just put the UV lamp over there and turn it on. Yes, it's on now. 
and you can see that that rod is starting to fall immediately. That was an instantaneous. Didn't take a while for it to get going. That started to fall immediately, but the ultraviolet was instant on the zinc plate. You will remember that ultraviolet radiation has a higher frequency than visible light. And so what, what has happened is I've I've exposed the plate to a radiation which is above some kind of threshold frequency. There is a minimum frequency of radiation at which this effect occurs. And we call that the threshold frequency. Okay, so we can see that it's removing the charge and that should get down to zero soon enough. And note also that this is negative charge which is being removed from the plate. Okay, so it's almost down to zero. What I'm going to do now is just discharge the remainder. And you'll see that it's on zero and it will not now start to get deflected away from the stem. And what that shows is that it's not going to start picking up some charge, either positive or negative now. Once the negative charge has been removed from the plate, there's no, no more effect of the ultraviolet radiation on the system there. I can turn this off. Now, uh, we want to confirm that it is all about the negative charge. One way was the fact that it didn't start to add any more charge once all the negative charge was removed. But also, if I positively charge the plate, I'm going to use an extra high tension supply for this. Now, because of the humidity, we're not getting very much deflection there, but there is a slight deflection. And if I turn the ultraviolet radiation on again, you'll see there is no change to the system here. It's, there's no charge being removed now. So this only if works when it's negatively charged. Okay, definitely not working. Okay. And also if I were to expose it to my visible light as well, there's no change there either. Thank you.